this is the Provoke Prawn, and in this video I'm going to show you how to set up and wire these Interstellar V2 Uni fans. Now these are Infinity Mirror fans with nice RGB effects that I've used in the Height Y40, and I'm going to show you the wiring and setup logic for them, but the basics of these will actually apply to a lot of other fans that are out there because there are very similar fans available. Now these ones are available in reverse blade and standard blade orientation, and I'm going to show you the wiring logic for that and what that means. We're going to start with a standard blade, which would traditionally be used as exhaust fans. So at the rear of your case and on the top of the case to exhaust hot air through the case and out into the world. They have three fans included in the triple pack and then two lots of cables and the screws for screwing them into your case. Because of the Unifan design, they're essentially built to connect together in the same direction with clips on either end. And this means that you can potentially put three fans together and then use them in your build. You can then screw them into the case and then only have one cable sticking out of the end rather than having cables per fan, which makes life a lot easier. On the side, you'll see there's a clip and some metal prongs, as well as some markings to tell you how to push them together and to lock them into place. That setup is fairly straightforward, although it is a little bit fiddly, but with those connectors in place, you can then ensure the RGB and power passes between each of the fans. As you can see, it can be quite fiddly to lock these together, and I'd recommend taking care not to force it in the wrong direction or to wiggle it around too much as it is quite easy to bend the pins. And I found this out to my detriment later on in the build where I then had to rejig one of the pins because it had bent and wasn't going properly in. And then that means that the RGB lighting doesn't work and one of the fans is then improperly functioning. So it could cause some issues. So just be careful when you're locking these fans together with that logic and make sure they're facing the same way while doing it obviously. The fans then have these two power cables included but you actually only need one for the group of fans. So this is quite straightforward despite the fact that there's four connectors on there. In theory you only need two as a minimum for each group. Essentially one of the connectors allows you to control the RGB and the other one is for fan power. This is the fan power connector for example. There are two cables on it, female and male. And this allows you to daisy chain the fans together which I'll show you in a second. And then you have the RGB one which you can see here one of which has a cap on, which is obviously the male version of that. And that's the five volt RGB connector, which will connect to your motherboard. And I'll show you that in a second as well. So we use the connector, the flat end to connect to the fan. And that uses the same sort of logic as the fans when we're putting them together and that it slots into place over those pins on one end. So you can only really plug it in in a logical way there. You would then run the cables to your motherboard once it's inside your case, starting with the 5 volt RGB connection, which connects that three pin connector on the motherboard that you can see here, marked 5 volt RGB. And this will then allow you to control the RGB lighting from your motherboard software. You then connect the fan cable, which is the power cable, to the chassis fan header or sys fan header on your motherboard. On most modern motherboards, you'll find multiples of these system fan headers or chassis fan headers on your motherboard, usually across the bottom, sometimes at the top and down the side as well. You can also usually find a couple of the 5 volt RGB connections as well. So in theory, you can easily plug in two groups. Now, as I said, you can daisy chain the cables together. So with the male connector on one group of fans, you can connect that to the female connector on the other group, plugging them in quite simply like this, which means that if you've only got one or two 5 volt RGB connectors, you can still connect groups of fans. You can also use these fans to replace the standard fans that come on your all-in-one cooler. So here you can see me using them on the NZXT Kraken Z73, for example. Make sure you place the fans in a logical direction. So here I'm setting the fans as exhaust. And then the cable logic works quite similarly. Now with this cooler, there's actually a breakout cable that comes from the pump head that allows you to plug fans into it. So you can connect the fan power cable instead of to your motherboard, you connect it to this splitter cable, which comes with the pump. 
That way, the pump itself is then powering the fans and controlling them and allows you to get those fans running, at least for the fan power. You still need to connect the RGB connection directly to the motherboard, though, or alternatively to an RGB controller, as I'll show you in a minute. Once you've installed the pump to your motherboard and set that up as you normally would, you'd then need to also connect that pump to the motherboard as well, that way, both the CPU fans, as in the fans on the radiator, are controlled by the system and the pump is also controlled by the motherboard as well. There are two different options here. You plug the AIO pump into the AIO pump header on the motherboard and that will then control the pump speed via your motherboard software and the BIOS. And then you can connect the fans directly to the pump as I've shown. Or alternatively, you can connect the fans that are on the radiator to the CPU fan header. That way, both parts of the system are controlled by the motherboard. As I mentioned, there are also reverse blade versions of these fans available. Essentially, these are the same sort of logic, but they have the blade's direction reversed. So you'll notice on the right-hand side, the, the reverse blade is a slightly different shape. And if you put them side by side, you can tell the way they're facing is different. The reason for this is they're designed so that you can put them as intake fans, but you can still see the infinity mirrors and the nice bit of the fans. So here I've got them side mounted, for example, facing inwards towards the case, but those are now intake fans pulling air in from the rear. The top fans are then exhaust fans, so you can still see the mirrors on whatever direction you choose. So this is how you can mix and match standard and reverse blade. Now, as an alternative for the RGB connections that I've shown you, you can use something like the Razer Chroma RGB controller. Here, instead of connecting the 5 volt connections to your motherboard, you connect them to the controller instead. This thing is capable of controlling multiple groups of fans and lots of different devices. And then you plug the USB connection from it into your motherboard. And then it also requires powering as well. So you then plug in the Molex power cable as seen here and make sure you have a Molex cable on your power supply unit to power it. This enables you to use the RGB lighting still on the fan without having to worry about 5 volt headers on the motherboard. And then you can control the RGB lighting with Razer's Synapse software. I've done this in the Height Y40 case as well, and I set it up showing you how to do this. The other bonus is you can also use this with Signal RGB as well. So you have not only RGB lighting controls within Synapse, which include setting the lighting brightness and various different lighting effects, as well as screen mirroring and things like that, and chroma apps, if you have chroma apps that you like to play with. But you can also control other things and set it up with Signal RGB, so you've got syncing across all of the devices. But the end result, as you can see here, is some really nice looking fans and easily controllable. You have the options and how you'd set them up and how you'd wire them in. A few different things that I will mention that are fairly important though, that I haven't mentioned already. One of them is I wouldn't recommend connecting more than the three fans to a single system fan header or chassis fan header. If you tried to daisy chain two groups of three together and then run them off one system header, you're probably going to have too much power draw and it won't work very well. If you use a fan controller, you can get a separate fan controller and I've done a full video separately on that and my recommendations there, you can get a nice thermal right one that can control both RGB and fan power, then it won't be an issue. But if you're trying to draw too much power with multiple groups of fans off one header, not ideal. So I'd recommend using one fan header for each group of fans that you're using these uni fans, whether it's two or three rather than trying to daisy chain those together. Daisy chaining the RGB is just fine. That's logical and it will work fairly well here without any problems. But with the fan power side of things, I wouldn't take that risk. But the end result is some nice looking fans easily wired into your case. And hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, check out the links in the description where I've got more videos like this to help you with your PC build. Thanks very much for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.